Bet you haven't heard this before. Steam is coming to Linux. Yeah, yeah, that's almost old news now, but what exactly does it mean for we Linux gamers? Well, I'm gonna touch base on the Greenlight project that's on Steam at the moment, as well as the 10 official games that they've announced that will be released on Linux, officially, officially, and the $100 that Steam is starting to charge for developers and why they're doing that. So keep watching to find out. Brought to you by Gamefly. Hi, I'm Nixie Pixel, and you're watching OS Alt, your source for open source. So I find Steam's Greenlight project to be fascinating. I mean, I love the idea of user submitted content. So you have the indie developers, and then you have the community voting for the games. If you're still not really getting what Greenlight is, I like to give the example of Kickstarters because people love to back Kickstarters if it's something they believe in. And also there's a lot of Linux games coming through because people want Linux games and they're throwing money at it. So if you think of Greenlight, it's more like people are throwing their thumbs up at it. They're giving it positive ratings and the results have been pretty positive. In fact, here's a quote from Valve. With the additional help of beta testers, we're able to launch with a solid lineup of titles for the community to start viewing and rating. And as we've done with all Steam features, we intend to continually grow and modify Greenlight as more and more developers and community members have the chance to get involved. And this is really sweet because it goes back to the idea of kickstarting a project, but without throwing loads of money at it. All you do is you say yay or nay, and that is phenomenal. You guys should go check it out, log into your Steam accounts, and get ready for the Linux gaming revolution. And this is really corny looking. Speaking of money, I really like when a company puts their money where their mouth is. And in this case, I'm really excited to tell you guys that Valve has announced officially, like I said, 10 games that are gonna be released for Steam on Linux. Let's see if you recognize any of these awesome indie titles. Kenshi, Dream, Heroes and Generals, McPixel, Black Mesa, Cry of Fear, Routine in Towns, and Project Zomboid. And that's just the beginning, so if you really want to see a game available in Linux, go to Greenlight and thumb it up, like Postal 2. Oh my goodness, the kitty silencer, where you take the cat and you put it on the gun, it's like meow, 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 meow. That is Postal 1, and I am not creepy, I swear. Admittingly, there was a pretty huge problem that arose upon launching Greenlight that Valve didn't really plan for. How do I say this? It's like the Android versus Apple phenomenon. So because uh, Apple is harder to develop for, it's more expensive, so not a lot of people really get through that buffer. Whereas Android, it's open source, and it's really cheap to develop for because of that. So there's a lot more trashy applications, if you will. So when you relate that back to Greenlight, because it was free to throw your game out there, Everybody was making a game. It was like, oh, I can make stick figures do the same thing over and over and over again. There's an app for that. No, no. So they started charging $100. Personally, I think $100 as a buffer is no problem. If you think of any of the game developer conferences that you go to, it's like $3,000 just for a few days of actually sitting in and learning as a developer a lot of the skills and tools. So I think to put a game out there on a medium where tons of people are potentially going to buy your game shouldn't be an issue. Not to mention it's for charity people. The Child's Play charity specifically, which I really believe in, I've done coverage for it in the past. There's a big event in my city that I partake in every year, and it's great. It's to provide sick children in hospitals with some video games, with some digital splendor, and I'm all for that. All the profits of the $100 throwdown goes to that. So not to sound like a sappy fangirl, but Valve, I love the hell out of you right now. You are announcing games for Linux, you are allowing people to vote on if they want games to be on the Linux platform, and you even have an entry for your Linux Steam beta that we have found because we are elite hack source. Look at that, it's in the Steam database, Linux, right there. So excited. I will be sure to keep you guys updated on all the potential gaming possibilities on Linux, so be sure to stick with me for that. And actually, in the New York Times, Valve even gave this quote. 
The company will begin a public test of a new television-friendly interface, Big Picture, for buying Steam games and playing them on computers in the living room. Yet another techgasm. Have you guys seen this at all, Big Picture? Uh, if so, what, when, where, how do I find it? I want in on this. And also, I haven't forgot the Ouya. I am going to get one of those for you guys. Get my hands on it a little bit early, so fingers crossed on that one. And as always, thanks for watching OS All. Be sure to subscribe up there so you don't miss out on next Friday's episode of All Things Open Source. Bye! How much gaming can you handle? Play all the games as well as 8,000 other titles on all platforms, including new unlimited PC play. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as you like, or until you get Carpal Tunnel. Or if you really can't part with your game, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and it's yours at a discounted price. They'll even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Oh, and of course, Gamefly has no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. And if you're a fan of OSALT, I'm a fan of giving you a 15-day free trial when you go to Gamefly.com OSALT and sign up now.